Hello and welcome to today's webinar on Introducing the Copeland Digital Outdoor Refrigeration Unit X-Line Series brought to you by Emerson. My name is Tara Barlaghi and I am your moderator for today. We have just a few announcements before you begin. Please note that this presentation's audio is provided by phone or through your computer's sound system. If you'd like to revisit key sections of today's webinar, it will be available on demand at climate.emerson.com slash digital xline a few days after this live event. You'll also receive an email in the next few days with a link to the recorded event. As mentioned, you may type questions into the text area and hit send in the Q&A panel throughout the webinar. We will answer all questions at the end. Discussing today's webinar will be Julie Havner. Julie Havner joined Emerson in 2015. As the company's product manager for condensing units, she focuses her efforts on the development and marketing of condensing units to serve both the food service and food retail markets. Prior to her role in product management, she has held roles in strategic pricing and market analysis. Julie earned a bachelor's degree in marketing and decision sciences from Miami University. The webinar will now begin. Julie? Thanks, Kara. So today we're going to start the presentation by reviewing decentralized condensing units. Uh, what that architecture consists of, what its benefits are, and also some potential limitations of the traditional units that you typically see. Then we're going to review what our Copeland Digital Outdoor Refrigeration Unit is, uh, what digital technology is, what applications we see this fitting into, and then the features and benefits of the, of the digital X-Line. And then we're going to round out the presentation with a uh, results of a field test that we have uh, with our digital X-Line, as well as some additional materials and information and where you can find those. And then as we mentioned, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So before we really dive in, um, we would really like to gather some general information to get us started. Um, these are three quick questions uh, just to gauge the audience on your familiarity with digital, X or digital technology, uh, so the first question is, how familiar are you with digital capacity modulation technology? And if you don't know what that means, then obviously you'll just go ahead and select not at all familiar. Um, and then we'll have, how familiar are you with our X-Line product offering? So this just kind of gives me a feel for, of the folks on the phone, um, how much detail I need to go into on our X-Line offering, uh, just to give us a feel for that. And then lastly, have you previously installed or purchased an X-Line product? A simple yes, no. Again, just to gauge um, how, how deeply you understand the product and if you've used it in the past. So I'll give you a couple seconds here, and then we will move on to our presentation. Okay. And the poll will stay open for just a few more seconds there if you're not finished, but I will go ahead and, and move forward. And we'll start with decentralized condensing units. So back on May 5th, uh, Andre Potnow and Diego Marathon presented on future refrigeration architectures for meeting refrigerant regulations. Uh, this was an E360 webinar, and actually, if you weren't able to attend, I would highly recommend it. Um, if, if you don't know how to get to our E360 platform, it's actually very simple. You can just Google Emerson E360 webinars, and it'll pop right up. Um, but during that presentation, they talked about a lot of different architectures for the future. Um, each of these has its own benefits, each has its own limitations, just based upon, you know, what type of store format you have, what you're looking for, what, what you know, customer pain points you're trying to address. Today, specifically, we're going to hone in on these decentralized condensing units. So I do want to mention, though, that there will be some future uh, sessions that, you know, will address some of these other architectures, so please be sure to check those out as well, because each one brings a different you know, like I said, different benefits to the market. So when looking at the benefits of decentralized, first, just to kind of clear the air on decentralized condensing units and, and that terminology, um, I'm basically referring to, you know, typically remote condensing units that are more of a one-to-one -one architecture. So one condensing unit, so one evaporator, very simple architecture. It's extremely popular because it is very easy to implement. Um, when we're talking about remote units, which we'll be discussing mostly today, it obviously removes heat and sound from the building. Uh, today we'll also be focused on air-cooled units, um, and obviously air-cooled versus water-cooled, they each have their own benefits, but when working with air-cooled units, there's no water loop necessary or pump skids, so sometimes that has some extra cost um, or 
architecture uh, challenges there just depending upon your location. And it gives you flexibility for load expansion and retrofits. So, you know, each architecture, like I said, has its benefits. And while this has been a predominantly a very popular architecture in both food service and food retail, you know, we've talked to a lot of customers over the years and feel there's some limitations on some existing traditional condensing units. So we're going to kind of talk through what those limitations may be. So from a traditional decentralized condensing unit perspective, most of these units, which you can see from my pictorials here, uh, very simple units, mechanically controlled a lot of times, not a lot of remote communication available, no onboard diagnostics. Um, typically, there's, these are all housed in a square metal enclosure, which does restrict mounting options um, and, and sometimes can be very heavy. Uh, a lot of these are single speed, just on-off fan cycling controls, and a, and a lack of system protections. Uh, and then lastly, these last two, the single units required for every load and each unit individually field wired. Um, you know, those are, those are some unique challenges that, that traditional units today just cannot address. So understanding our customer pain points, we actually launched our fixed speed X-Line product uh, several years back with a lot of modifications. And this product offering does address uh, a lot of the pain points and the limitations that I discussed on the previous slide. So it does have the slim profile. Um, it ha it's very quiet. And, and by the way, we know it can sometimes be confused with a mini split AC system uh, because of its slim profile. But that slim profile enables us to wall mount these units. You can see in the picture here, they can be uh, mounted on rails. Uh, outside of even just stores on the ground. Um, because they're so quiet, they can be located close to entrances or patios. Um, energy efficiency, I'm going to talk here in a second on some of the, the features of an X-Line, and you'll see why it is such an energy efficient unit. Connectivity, so we talked a lot about traditional units not having the ability to communicate uh, with, this, with building management systems, um, our Exline product has that offering. Um, protection, we automatically include a core sense diagnostic, uh, which offers not only to make sure that the unit's set up initially correctly, uh, but also if anything happens within the system, it can send out errors and alert codes to protect that compressor. And then lastly, it is AUS compliant, uh, which were the DUE regulations. Uh, medium temp started in January and low temp coming in July. Um, so our units are compliant with AWIS as well. So, and, and as we speak about the fixed line, fixed X line features and benefits, just know that all of these, pretty much every one of these is exactly the same in the digital version, which we'll speak about as well. So keep that in mind as we go through. So looking at the inside of the X line. Uh, what are some of the specific features that enable us to have these benefits that I just spoke about? Um, electronic controls. So all of our X-Lines, both fixed and digital, that we'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, do come with the Dixcell controller, the XPM25D. This enables us to, um, it's much more reliable than traditional mechanical controls. Uh, it has built-in protection and diagnostics, and it even has a bump start feature. Um, all of our X-Lines um, have the scroll compressor technology built in, uh, the Copeland brand, and it provides the most reliable high-efficiency compression available. Uh, in our low-temp six-speed X-Line, we have enhanced vapor injection, and this improves capacity as well as energy efficiency. Variable speed fan motor control, um, this is where you're going to get a lot of um, efficiency gain, you know, efficient head pressure control as well as a very quiet unit um, comes with that, with that variable speed fan. And then larger condenser coils, um, we gain a lot of efficiency with these large coils. And as you can tell by the blue color of the coil, it's actually pre-coated, um, which helps with weathering. And it is actually ready to go from a salt water, you know, ocean perspective. Uh, we have this coating on there that protects it from corrosion. And then lastly, the heated and insulated receiver, it allows to operate in low ambient conditions. And all of these features are our standard on the X-Line. And besides the vapor injection, because that's low temp only, all of these items also apply to the digital that we'll talk about in just a moment. So 
you don't have a lot of, you know, all these different options and packages with the X-Line. They all come free installed in, in all of one package. To expand just a little bit on the communication piece of the X-Line, um, as I mentioned, we have the XCM 25D controller within all of our X-Lines. We have that pre-programmed to automatically tie into XWeb, Site Supervisor, and E2, which are all Emerson um, controller platforms. And I do want to mention, though, that even if you're not using one of these platforms, the X-Line can still be tied into other building management systems as well. But it is simpler to tie it into something that's an Emerson-based product because those are automatically pre-installed. Uh, but this gives the ability to um, remote off-site visibility and control of the system. And we'll actually talk about some of those benefits when we go through the field test site. OK. So we had talked about the limitations on decentralized units. And we've addressed a lot of the pain points um, with the standard fixed speed X line. However, as you know, we talked about initially that one-to-one -one architecture and individually single, you know, individually piping and the electric runs for each unit weren't necessarily addressed with a fixed speed unit. So we have now uh, launched our digital version of the X line, and that enables us to modulate from 100% down to 20 percent. So what is digital modulation? It does look like from the polling that we have a variety of experience on the phone. Um, for those of you that said you're extremely familiar with digital, I'm guessing that you've probably been tied into the food retail space uh, in some fashion because digital scrolls have been used on racks in supermarkets for many years. Um, it's very reliable. It's, it's a a very simple way to, to have that capacity modulation. Um, but it is newer to the food service side. And so some of you that are not at all familiar, I'm not surprised to hear that just because it's something that's relatively new on that side of the business. So it is not, it's fundamentally different than an inverter-based uh, technology. So this is not variable speed where the speed of the motor uh, ramps up and down. Uh, digital is actually simpler than that. Um, essentially, the controller that we discussed earlier, the XCM 25D, it will actually um, detect the demand coming back from all the various loads in which it's feeding. And I know I haven't shown this pictorially yet, but the digital does allow you to tie into multiple evaporators, so keep that in mind. Um, so let's say this, this X line is tied to four evaporators. So it's going to understand the demand from those four evaporators, and it will send signals to the solenoid valve and when to energize and de-energize. So when it does, when its solenoid valve opens, the pressure decreases on the piston at the top of the scroll, and that allows the scroll to move axially by just one millimeter, but that allows compression to stop, but without ever stopping the scroll. Um, it will then alternate between these loading and unloading segments, and that will fulfill the need of the refrigeration load that it's connected to. So to give you a few examples I have down here at the bottom, um, if it needs 50% capacity at any given time, um, it's going to fully load for 10 seconds and unload for 10 seconds. So the controller looks at this in 20-second increments, and that's how it adjusts the modulation. So every 20 seconds, it's reevaluating the system and then uh, modifying as needed. So and then in the second example, uh, in this case, it needs 75% output, so it's going to fully engage for 15 seconds and unload for five seconds. So you can see that it's a very simple uh, tech technology. It's very reliable, but it is unique compared to traditional uh, compression options. From an application standpoint, um, we see this tying well into display cases, walk-in coolers, food preparation and process fillers. So just to give a few examples, um, when we're talking about convenience stores, we see this as a, as a great fit. We're talking to a few end users on, you know, folks that have, let's say, four medium temp walk-in coolers. And we're able to take four of those condensed units and replace them with just two digital X lines. Um, from a restaurant perspective, you know, if, if a restaurant has multiple medium temp loads, 
Uh, we can tie that into display cases, coolers, prep stations, and our field test site will actually display that well in just a few slides. From a supermarket perspective, um, a lot of times these are probably going to be smaller format stores that we can tie into their medium temp cases or maybe their deli section where they prepare food. Um, and even large format stores, though, specifically click and collect options, um, are also a few examples of areas where this can tie into. And then the process filler uh, in the industrial market is also another area that the digital X line can fit. So now let's dive a little further into the features and benefits. So the digital X line uh, gives us this multiplexing technology option, uh, which is unique as we've talked about, that enables us to tie into multiple cases per unit. So in this little uh, picture we have here, uh, we have one digital X line tied to a walk-in cooler, um, a display case, and a food prep station. And there can be a variety of different applications this ties to, but that kind of helps, you know, give a visual for what this, is, what this looks like. Down at the bottom, we actually have a list of the different condensed units we released. So we have a three, four, five, and six horsepower uh, digital X-Line offering, and that's at fully loaded capacity. So uh, you can see here in the chart that there's a green, light green, and a dark green area. Hopefully that light green is showing up well for you on your screen. Um, the dark green represents 50 to 100% capacity, and this is what we call the sweet spot, basically. This is where we would recommend you sizing the unit within um, if, if the unit the unit can run and will run at the 20 to 50 percent range. However, if the unit's sized in that lower range, it's just going to be completely oversized and just you won't see the benefits that the digital can offer. So we want to make sure that folks are not completely oversizing this and we, we want to stick to the higher end when sizing the unit uh, to make sure you, you can really realize the benefits of digital. So, Installation benefits. Um, when we talk through what the what all benefits come to mind with the digital X line, you know, as we're talking to customers, the fewer units to install and maintain have been has been a huge selling feature. Um, you know, we've talked to customers that you know were able to cut the number of their condensed units in half or even more in some cases um, because the X line is so lightweight in its flexible installation options. Um, they're even able to look at lightning, you know, how much their rooftop, um, their building specs are for the weight of the roof, um, how much it needs to support. So it, it gives a lot of uh, initial installation benefits and startup cost uh, reduction. And then simple and quick commissioning. Uh, to get the unit up and running, there's only three set points, uh, refrigerant, time clock, and suction pressure. And something I didn't mention is this is also a a benefit from the fixed side as well. Our fixed speed X line also only has three set points, refrigerant and time clock, same as the digital. But instead of suction pressure, the fixed speed has a cut in and cut out. So both very simple, very quick commissioning uh, and easy to get up and running. When it comes to the fewer units, uh, you also have reduced refrigerant charge and line set uh, benefits. So I'll talk about the field test site uh, that we're going to share today, and they were actually able to reduce the refrigerant charge by 50% um, by eliminating condensing units and, and consolidating line runs. And then with our advanced diagnostics, um, we make sure that the unit's running properly the first time and, and kind of <laughs> trying to save that contractor the costly callbacks. Uh, so with the diagnostics, if, if they set the unit up and there's something wrong, it's going to immediately give them an error, and they can see what that error code means and help them troubleshoot on the spot and make sure that it's running properly before they leave. From an operational benefits perspective, um, the advanced diagnostics are a little different on this side. Once the unit's up and running, um, if there is something going on within the system, um, it, will, it will send out error codes. It will give them, you know, uh, kind of <laughs> advice in a sense to help troubleshoot and get it right the first time. Uh, if there's something going on within the system, it, it will actually protect the compressor uh, and shut down the system if need be, just to make sure it's not burning up the compressor and sending out those error codes to, to alert someone that something's going on within the system. Energy efficiency. 
so our X line, you know, we've already talked about the fixed speed, the fact that it has, you know, the larger condenser coils, the variable speed fans, electronic controls. So you take that platform, and then we add the digital compressor to it. And because the digital will result in fewer starts and stops, uh, you're going to see an energy benefit there because you're reducing the number of those large amp draws every time the unit kicks on. So there's energy savings within the X-Line, X-Line platform itself, and then the digital brings some additional benefits as well. High temperature control, uh, this will enable, you know, improved food safety, food quality, which obviously impacts the end user's bottom line. And then lastly, the ultra-quiet operation. We talked about the, you know, how quiet the X-Line was when we discussed the fixed speed. Um, but it can practically be installed anywhere, and it's, it's very popular in, in very populated areas, especially if they have residential uh, neighbors as well. They, they highly appreciate the, the quiet operation. OK, so I'm going to take just a quick second here. And we're going to ask, you know, now that we've kind of reviewed what the digital X line is, uh, what it benefits it brings, um, and how, you know, what all it has to offer. We're just curious. We would like to kind of get your feedback on, you know, thinking through where all this can be placed and, and how you might possibly utilize the digital X line. You know, where would you plan to utilize the digital X line? You know, and please select all that apply. You know, do you think this would be a great fit for you within a casual fine dining restaurant, quick serve restaurant, convenience stores, small format food retail, large format food retail, and industrial applications? So I'm going to take a quick five-second break here and let you uh, answer this question, and then we'll go on to the next one. OK. So I'll probably give you a few more seconds there before the poll closes, but I'll go ahead and move to the next question. And before we move into the field test, um, we'd also like to get a little feedback from you on which of the following is the strongest driver for you to consider buying and or recommending the digital X line? So, you know, we see that there's a lot of benefits to the X line, and we're just curious, you know, which one do you feel is the most compelling reason or the strongest driver? Is it the reduced refrigeration footprint, a lower startup cost, tight temperature control, or load matching? Uh, energy efficiency, advanced diagnostics, or ease and flexibility of installation. We're just looking for one answer on this one um, just to kind of get your opinion on where you think that, you know, speaks to you the most. Give that a second, and then we'll start talking about the field test. Okay. So, we wanted to make sure we talked through a field test site just so you could see how the digital X line can be applied um, and make sure that you understand how this can all be set up. Um, so looking at the field test pre-install, you know, this is actually a premier steakhouse in Manhattan. Um, and we approached the co a contractor about the digital X line concept when we were looking for some field test sites, and he immediately knew that this site would be perfect. Uh, for the digital X line. Um, it had several pain points the contractor was trying to address, and he had not found the right architecture to help this uh, restaurant out at that point. So, you know, what, what were the pain points he was faced with? They had an aging architecture which needed to be upgraded. Uh, they just continued to service the condensing units, and uh, it, it wasn't, um, you know, they weren't very efficient, so he was looking for energy savings. Uh, these were also water-cooled condensing units. Um, they were looking for a reduction in water. We'll actually talk about how much water they are they are uh, saving at this point. Um, however, some challenges with choosing a new architecture, they did not want indoor units uh, because they wanted to avoid you know, heat within the kitchen. They also wanted to clear out this space uh, so that they had more space in the kitchen hallway so they could use it for storage and food. Um, and then the, the kicker, though, is that they are in downtown New York City, and space availability, you know, the space on the roof is comes at a premium. So they didn't have a lot of space to put uh, condensed units on the roof, but as you'll see, the X-Line was able to, to fit that need. So here's a picture of 
the, the results. So they were able to remove, um, I believe it was somewhere between 25 to 30 condensing units um, from that hallway, and they replaced that with four X lines. So he installed one digital six horsepower medium tone condensing unit that serves eight evaporators. And you can see there's a variety of applications here. He has some kitchen under counters, a meat aging walk-in box, a meat prep room, a meat walk-in box, a three-door bar refrigerator, and a two-door region refrigerator. So a variety of applications, all medium temp, of course. Um, and then he supplemented some of the other larger walk-in cooler loads, as well as the freezer, with some fixed X lines. So he chose a, two, a low temp two horsepower for the walk-in freezer, and then two six horsepower medium temps for two walk-in coolers. So looking at the results, um, there's a significant reduction in water usage. They had hired a consultant to evaluate how much water they were using, and it was close to an Olympic-sized pool per day. Um, just a massive amount of water in New York City, which was clearly not, not the cheapest. Um, they eliminated the condensing units from the hallway. Uh, because they were able to consolidate so many units and line runs, they reduced their refrigerant charge by 50% and actually ended up at less than 50 pounds for this entire restaurant. Um, highly flexible load matching, the precise setting and tight control. Obviously, they're experiencing energy efficiencies as well, and fewer units uh, to maintain going forward. You know, some specific contractor feedback that we received. Um, he really likes the fact that it controls the humidity of the meat room more precisely. Um, it keeps the suction pressures even. The EVFs are not icing anymore. Uh, it's reducing the on-off cycles. And he really likes the fact that he has that course in diagnostics. Um, and we have this tied into a site supervisor. Um, so the fact that this is a premier steakhouse, they have a lot of uh, you know, very valuable, expensive products. On, on site, so this enables him to watch that um, product and he can watch that actually through his phone uh, through the site supervisor application. So he really likes those benefits as well. And, you know, I will, I will mention that um, we hope to have a, a few more numbers to some of these results and we will still have that going forward. Unfortunately, with COVID-19, uh, this, this site has unfortunately been closed for several months, so that's caused some challenges uh, with calculating some of the numbers. We, we didn't feel it was necessarily fair to calculate an energy savings when the restaurant wasn't actually running. Uh, so we want to make sure that's fair. Uh, the unit has been running though since January, so we know it, it's running beautifully. Uh, they love the way it works, and, and we're looking forward to them being up, back up and running uh, so that we can continue to gather the results and build that case out. So we'll share that as it comes. And the last thing I would say about the field test site is to not be intimidated <laughs> by the complexity of this field test site. Um, most, most sites where digital x will be used will probably not be this complex. Uh, we wanted to share this field test because we wanted to show just how um, complex you, you know, of a situation you can use this unit in. But a lot of the other customers we've worked with and contractors we're working with you know, are simply applying this to three walk-in coolers. It's a very simple application. Um, so just please don't be, you know, uh, too overwhelmed by the complexity of this particular site uh, because digital can be used in a variety of applications. Okay. So for additional information, so we have several different brochures and uh, materials available for reference. Here's a few pictures pictorials of some things that we've launched recently. Um, I will say, though, that I think the best way to, to gather that information, we have our uh, Copeland Outdoor Unit landing page, our x Series landing page. Um, it does have a ton of information out there on the fixed speed x line. so if you're interested in that. There's a lot of QBRs, brochures, manuals. Um, and then if you would like specifically digital x line information, I have a box, a yellow box here, uh, highlighting there's a digital x section. You can go to that, and then all of these different brochures and QBRs and such are available there as well. So a lot of information out there. Um, please take a look, and if you don't find what you're looking for, please contact us. 
Um, but there's a lot of information we do have out there to help you understand the digital X line as well as share that information with your customers. Okay, so while we prepare for the Q&A session, um, we're going to pop up just two last questions. I know it was like taking a test today. <laughs> this is the last two questions, I promise. Um, but while, so while we get the Q&A ready, uh, just quickly, how likely are you to consider recommending and or selecting the digital X line uh, for a future job? Extremely likely, somewhat likely, or not likely? And then would you like someone from Emerson to personally contact you? Um, if you have a sales representative, we'll let them know uh, that you're, you have additional interest, and we'll get you in touch. Uh, if you do not have a sales representative assigned, then we will find someone, including even myself, to reach out to you and to understand what questions you might have or what additional information you're looking for. And so hopefully we can, we can help you out with whatever you need. So please go ahead and mark yes if you'd like someone to reach out to you. And then we'll give it a second here, and we'll start the Q&A. We would now like to take some time to answer some of your questions. Our senior consultant, Brian Binasek, will be joining us to answer any technical questions alongside Julie that you may have about the Digital X line. As a reminder, to participate in the Q&A, type your question into the text area and hit send. Please keep the send to default set as all panelists. Lots of good questions came in during the uh, presentation. Thank you, everybody. Um, several of you picked up on the fact that we were talking about the capacity control from 20 to 100%. Several of you pointed out that um, Copeland Digital Scrolls, typically we talk about unloading to 10% capacity. Um, and I, I would say that that's a parameter setting that Julie was talking about. So the unit leaves the factory um, with the minimum capacity setting at 20%. Uh, with a 20-second digital cycle, but both of those parameters are adjustable. Um, you can you can have a shorter or longer digital cycle. You can take it down to 10%. We just kind of there's some um, there's some details in our application bulletin, which is number uh, application engineering bulletin 1412, uh, which talks about those parameters and some of the considerations you want to have. Um, but, th but again, those are just factory settings. If if you want to change it maybe for a little bit more aggressive um, digital cycle, probably should consult with your application engineer before you do that. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Julie? No, I think that's great. All right. Another question we got, Julie, what refrigerants are approved uh, for Digital X line? Okay, good question. Um, so the refrigerants approved for digital include 404A, 407A, 448, and 449A, as well as 507. And um, all of those minus the 507 are also AWIF approved for digital, um, even though uh, we don't technically promote this as an AWIF unit just because most of the time this will not be used in a single evaporator application. It is available for those unique scenarios where AWIF is required. So it is approved for that as well. Okay. We got a question about uh, setting the system to control the condenser fan and floating the head pressure. And um, yes, you can take advantage of lower ambient, out, lower outdoor ambient temperatures. You can float the head pressure down. Again, there is some um, parameter settings within the controller uh, that allow you to do that, and then the controller automatically um, adjusts the condenser fan. Uh, just like the the fixed speed uh, X lines, you can you can float the head pressure down with the with the digital X line and take advantage of those additional energy savings. Um, Another related question is, can you float the suction? And actually, yes. Um, as, as that unit unloads, um, the, the suction pressure will come up, and you're, you'll see that your uh, average suction pressure on, on the typical system with the digital condensing unit, the uh, average suction pressure will be, will be higher, uh, you know, obviously, than, than the lowest uh, suction pressure you would have when you were running, a, um, say, a fixed speed on-off condensing unit. So there, that's uh, also additional energy savings. We got a question about... Um, 80 by eight. I can. Sorry, I can't pronounce this. 80 by attic pads, evaporative pads, um, to reduce uh, condensing. You know, we haven't tested uh, the unit with like aftermarket evaporative pads. Uh, I know that those are starting to become popular in some, um, you know, desert environments, hot, dry uh, environments. I don't know that we've tested those uh, on any um, any outdoor condensing units really. But if you, uh, you know, if you have an application and you're interested in trying that. Again, it probably would be best if you um, consulted with your application engineer and talked to them about uh, what, what you want to do and why you want to do it. Um, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. 
Julie, a question for you. Uh, what voltages are available for the digital X-Line units? Okay. Um, all four of the horsepower, so the 3, 4, 5, and 6, all come in a three-phase 230 volt. And then the 3 and the 5 horsepower are also available in a single phase as well. Good, good. Okay. Got a question about the unloader solenoid valves. Um, somebody was doing some math in their head and wanted to know about the um, expected life of that unloader solenoid. Obviously, it could have, you know, millions of cycles a year. I, I will say that um, Emerson uh, developed the, the Copeland brand, you know, digital compressors about 20 years ago uh, and developed a special solenoid, unloader solenoid valve and coil to go along with those. So we, you know, we do want you to use the, the unloader solenoid and coil that, that come with the unit. Um, it's, a, it's a very high life uh, unit, it's, it's uh, guaranteed for the life of the compressor. I, I don't know exactly how many millions of cycles that is, um, but it is a special coil and it is for the uh, life of the life of the unit. A um, couple questions came in, Julie, ab about the uh, field test. They wanted to know how high above the walk-ins was, uh, was the outdoor uh, digital condensing unit. So how, how many stories approximately? Yeah, I believe it was either, oh gosh, it was either two or three stories. I believe it was actually three. Yeah, yeah, that's above. what I recall, three stories. So the, the unit was three stories above the loads, above the evaporators, um, and we still see really good oil return there, even though there's that elevation change. So that worked out pretty good. Um, question about the two fan units. Um, are there one or two refrigeration circuits? Even though there's two fans, it's just a single, uh, it's just a single refrigeration circuit. Well, I mean, the condenser coil can be circuited, um, but it's not two, it's not two separate circuits. If, if, I think that's what the intent of that question was. Uh, there's another question here. How are you controlling the temperatures in uh, multiple rooms with a single digital unit? You know, so each walk-in box, each walk-in cooler or medium temperature display case uh, is controlled in a traditional fashion. It's, it's got a, a liquid line solenoid valve or, or an electronic expansion valve that serves that purpose. So there's a thermostat in each room or on the case that uh, opens the liquid line solenoid valve, lets the refrigerant flow. Uh, the condensing unit doesn't actually have to communicate with those um, uh, evaporators, so it's just wor working on a on a suction pressure, a suction pressure setting, um, as, as Julie talked about a little bit there. There's a little bit more details and explanation and explanation of that. Um, again, in the application engineering manual 1412, if you want a little bit want to learn a little bit more about that, you can read about that. Um, the, Julie, I think you might have already mentioned this, but the digital X-Line uh, horsepower range? Yes, yeah, so the three to six horsepower, and that's fully loaded, um, and those are for medium temperature refrigeration applications, just to make sure I restate that. Uh, we are, you know, possibly considering a low temp offering as well, um, but that's probably based on customer demand. Um, at this point, we felt, you know, the medium temp uh, was a little more applicable, and, and we'll look at low temp in the future, too. Good. There was a question about um, defrost requirements and connecting loads with different defrost requirements. As I said, the unit coolers can, can do their thing. Um, they don't necessarily have to communicate back to the, to the X-Line unit. When there's, a, when there's a call for cooling and the refrigerant is flowing, the X-Line senses that, and it, it, it go ahead, and if it's off, it turns on, and it, it go ahead, it modulates to maintain that, that average suction pressure that, that you want. So that's, uh, that's how that works. Lots of questions coming in. Some of them are very application specific, Julie, so I don't know that we're gonna get, get to all these questions. I may have to uh, respond in writing to a few of you, but thanks for all the good questions. Let, I'm kind of, they're scrolling through now. Um, What is the longest pipe runs you recommend on the digital X line? So, you know, good piping practices still, you know, prevail here, especially if you have, you know, a lift and you need to return oil to the unit. So, uh, what I would what I would say to what I would say about that is we're going to continue to use the, the piping practices that we have outlined, um, and uh, you know, just want to make sure we have the necessary velocities to get the oil back, especially if there's a, a lift. So things like traps, you know, still still come into play. Um, question about paralleling with other units. Um, 
so maybe a fixed speed and a, and a modulating condensed unit. Right now, we're, uh, we don't have those type of parallel applications approved, um, but if it is something, you know, you see a benefit and you, and you want something you want to try, it's certain, certainly something we would talk to you about and, and uh, maybe try to do some sort of field test in those. Um, are you planning to have water-cooled units, Julie, water-cooled digital X-Line units? Um, it has, that, that question actually has come up uh, in other conversations as well. At the moment, that is not necessarily on our roadmap, but based upon customer, you know, demand, and if we see that need uh, starts to really show up, then obviously that's something we would consider as well. One of our uh, experienced X-Line users said, don't forget to mention the hotkey used in replacing the controller. So, yes, um, each unit is shipped with a hotkey that has the programming on it. Uh, should a controller need to be uh, replaced or reflashed in the field, that's a very simple procedure. It only takes a matter of seconds. Uh, and again, that is described in our AE Bulletin 1412. Um, there was a question about sizing and, and kind of a number of questions about sizing and selecting units. So, and how do you do that? Whatever tool you like to use for sizing refrigeration loads, you, you can continue to do that. So if you, have a, if you have a tool you like to use for figuring out the load on a, on a walk-in cooler box, go ahead and do that. Uh, Emerson has a box load calculator, uh, which you can use to calculate the load for walk-in coolers, walk-in freezers. For this, if you're going to have multiple loads attached to it, which you know a lot of people are doing, several walk-in boxes, tip, simply do your load calculations, total them all up to get the whole load, you know, and then depending on what your required evaporating temperature is and what you're sizing for, you know, for outdoor ambient temperatures, it's, it's, no, it's no different than sizing a fixed speed condensing unit. So you're going to want to pick a unit, a digital unit, in this case, three, four, five, six horsepower uh, that, you know, meets or exceeds that, that capacity, that worst case capacity. Um, we don't want you to select, as Julie mentioned, too large of a unit. So, so example, for example, if you have a, a small, uh, walk-in cooler that would typically only need maybe a one horsepower condensing unit. We don't want you putting a, a six horsepower digital X line on there. Now there, there is some room, there's some wiggle room there. So we've had a couple folks who have said, hey, I'm going to put two coolers on now. Can I add a, a display case in the future? Do I have enough extra capacity? And the way we sized that unit was, yeah, you can add that extra capacity in the future. So um, something again to work with your application engineer and uh, and size it. So, Julie, there's there's lots of questions pouring in. Um, I think I think we're going to have to uh, get back to a few people in writing, but I think that's probably all we have time for today. Okay. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Julie. As mentioned, we'll be answering some of these questions via writing. We'll be getting those back to you soon. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, a few days after this live event, you can access this presentation on demand at climate.emerson.com slash digital xline, and you'll also receive an email in the next few days with a link to the recorded event. On behalf of Emerson, thank you for attending today's Product Spotlight webinar. Information and registration will be available soon for our next upcoming webinar. We hope you can join us again. Thank you.